Just getting set set up. Waiting for my guest. Um Good evening everybody. Give me one second. <clears throat> I'm gonna wait for my guest to jump jump in. This time hopefully we'll be able to um get the guests on Facebook as well. Oh, here we go. Uh, how do I get them? Um, one, let's see if we can get them on Facebook as well. <clears throat> All right, we got it. We got the one. Yeah. <laughs> how you doing? Now, did you did you join the Facebook one? So I'm on the Facebook. How do I get to it? Um, just put um, um, D R R A M E C K Hunt. Um, okay. And um, and then join the live. It's two of them up there, but <clears throat> it's only I don't. And so when you find it let me know we almost there guys remember interesting no, I don't yeah one more time with the name uh, uh, D R is D R A M E D R R A M E C K and then hunt. Yep, found it. Oh, you did good. So I'm on the page, I just need to find the actual uh button. So it's not showing you up here as on being on live. <clears throat> okay, so then that means you're on the other page. So the, okay. the the one you selected was the one that, so the next one is the one that's the live one. It gets a little tricky because one is a page and one is a, um, and one is a profile. So we'll get ready in about a minute or two, guys. Less than a minute. So the uh uh where would the live show up at? <laughs> That's me not going live on Facebook. This is sad. I know, right? It should be um it should be in in my feed if you're on my page. Yeah, I'm probably on the page I see like... uh probably because I'm not we're not friends on the Facebook. Is he not allowing me to do it? Oh, oh. So you want to... Um, yeah, yeah, I'm requesting you now. And the problem is, let me go... Let me go grab another device. Because if I go off the live, it probably will kick people off. Um, so let me just grab a device real quick. We appreciate you, those of you who are on here. Um, we are having a little bit of technical technical difficulties with Facebook. Um, as you know, um, these days, Facebook isn't the most used platform. But I'm figuring it out so that we can uh, have this discussion with you all on Instagram Live as well as on Facebook how y'all doing? How's everybody doing? Um, where are y'all from? For the people in the group. <clears throat> I 
What's your um? What's your face? Yep, G. Jamar Mills. So G E. M A R. Last name Mills. M I L L S. G E M A R Mills. Yes. Jersey is in the building. D C in the building. Okay. G M A R Mills. G -E. That's what. That's what Facebook. Huh. Yup. G E. Oh, G E. That's M what I got. Oh, to so Jamar Mills. Okay, got it. Yup. What's up, brother? How's everything? You know what? Oh. Um, I just, you know what? The the page. It's not the good. It's page, not the right one. I, I just sent you a request from the right page. <laughs> All right, perfect. I'm on it. Let me see if you got it. All right. Um, we're going to get started. <clears throat> Who we got? We got, oh, okay. What's going on, Bam? Thanks for joining. Yep. Um, you got it? Yep. All right. Um, Dr. Ayers, let me see if, you, if I got you. Here we go. No. Um, yep. And then join, see if you can join the, join the, uh, let me join the, 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 uh, the live. Um, and then join. See if you could join the join the uh, join the the the, uh, the live. Uh, yeah. And then join. See if you could join the join the uh, join the the, the uh, live. Yeah. <laughs> I don't it's know right. how to do this, we, man. We're going. You know, we're going. We're going. We're going. Um. We're going to get it going, and uh, we'll post, like I did last week, we'll post it on, um, we'll post it on Facebook, but they, they'll be able to hear you anyway, like they did last week. They just won't be able to see you until I post it. So, uh, welcome everybody. Um, I'm Dr. Ramik Hunt, um, and I got a special guest tonight, and I'm excited uh, for him to join me, uh, Dr. Jamar Mills, and uh, thank you for for uh, joining me tonight on, on this live. And I, I, I uh, would like the audience, I'd like you to share with the audience a little bit about yourself. Yep. I mean, um, my name is Jamar Mills, Dr. Jamar Mills. I am an author, a speaker, a, uh, a coach, mentor, of course, and a founder of uh, College Achieve Patterson Charter School. And uh, yeah. That, I mean, Good. that, that, that so, is in New Jersey. <laughs> yes. And you know, it's funny because when I was going through the bio, we have a lot of similarities. Like we got a North connection. We got a Seton Hall connection. We have a Plainfield connection. <laughs> so we got a, we got a lot of, a lot of different connections. So uh, tell, tell us a little bit about how you got started with, with when you were at Shabazz. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, man. I mean, um, so I guess this is an unorthodox road. I mean, I started out really young in education. I got in at 22. And by the time I mm. was 25, I was an administrator um, at Shabazz High School. I was a chairperson of mathematics. Um, did that for two years uh, before becoming the vice principal. And then in one year later, I became the principal. And probably not because oh. I was like, an amazing leader. But at that point, it was uh, three principals down, and they were trying to figure out who was going to be the leader. And the alumni just felt like I was the person that we should actually, uh, that they should select to be the guy. Um, the superintendent ain't necessarily fit that way. She took me through a lot um, in order to um, actually say yes to me getting the job. And then within that year, I became the principal. One year into that work, um, we we doubled the assessment scores in literacy uh, from 33% mm. to 
Yeah, and then before you knew it, um, most every news camera in America was in. <laughs> trying to figure out what we did, how we did it, and they did documentaries. We won an Emmy. It was just like you know, um, just just this thing that I felt was great for the community because it just lifted us up and let them know that this wasn't about adults; it was about children, and uh, they got an opportunity to shine. You know, and and they and then like just, just the cool that came with being educated was something that that really took took them to um, greater places. So, and maybe some of them are on this live. I hope so because yeah. uh, we. Experience them in their adult life and doing the work um, that we was doing for them back then. You know, that's funny that you say that because that's one of the things that me and my partners talk about, you know, like, you know, making it cool to be smart, making it cool, you know, yeah. you know, so that they not only can look up to a sports figure or somebody in entertainment, but they can also look up to an educator, a doctor, an astronaut, whoever, you know, to, to, to make it cool to be, you know, to be smart and, and 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 that's really where where what we've been on our quest to do for for some years and all all of, all of what you've done uh with with, with shabazz in in all of the attention then you and then you wrote it you wrote about it in the book and you um i just purchased it by the way um called the turnaround uh 180 uh, days of change can you talk a little bit about your book yeah yeah, I mean, so so the book is twofold. It's a uh, it's a black part and it's a gold part, and that's a play on the colors of the actual um, school itself. So the black part is the turnaround mm. that I had to own life that prepared me for the gold portion of it, which was the turnaround at Shabazz. And so I think without the experiences of my childhood and teenage experiences, and you know, having four hundred stitches in my face and you know, going through the trials and tribulations of just growing up as a, a teen mm. and, uh, mm. right, like, those experiences made it possible for me to just, like, understand what it's going to take to reach a young man that doesn't necessarily see or hope or, or experience hope in their community, that, you know, what they pretty much go through, they may feel like, this is my life. And so having an opportunity at a young age to connect with students that weren't too far from age with me really really uh created a dynamic that allowed me to connect with them it also allowed me to connect with the mm -hmm. staff and i mean everybody was on board this wasn't a, a dr mills thing and at the time principal mills thing this was like a team effort you know we we must protect this house yeah that's how we looked at it. And, and you know everybody and that, everybody put the work and that's important so the book, that, that team effort thing yeah the book the book gives you all of that as well as like five levers literally to do what i did in 180 days mm. yeah and you know one of the things that you said that <clears throat> that that i um that resonated with me is is the whole team effort thing and also the relatability like i think that a lot of people will tell you that i work with and um patients of mine that relatability is important. I mean, you 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 have to know how to do your job and your work and whatever your expertise is, but it's also good to be able to relate. Um, and I find that like being able to relate to a, to a patient, for instance, allows me to be a better diagnostician to figure out what's going on with them because I'm 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 getting things from them that are maybe even unsaid that I, that I'm, I'm, I'm getting from their body language or whatever it is. And so, um, and so, and people feel more comfortable talking to me because they feel that they can relate. And, and so that's why yeah. I, I really, re that resonated with me about, you know, being relatable and also the kids, like the work that we do in the community, the kids, yeah. you know, they, they can relate to you because, because you've had their experiences. And so I, I absolutely agree that that is, um, a, a really important skill set. And and then from Shabazz, you went on and started your own schools. Yeah, yeah. So um, I got an opportunity to work with a nonprofit that was heavily funded by uh, the, the, the wealthiest people in the country, essentially. Um, got an opp opportunity to travel the country um, of 50 principals across seven to eight different states. Um, and through that work, um, I met a, I met a, a team of people 
that uh, was working in Plainfield and I was, I hopped on board to support them in a consultant capacity um, and that transitioned into a partnership. And myself and my partner, mm. Mike Pisco, end up launching uh, College Achieve Patterson and College Achieve Asbury and then College Achieve Plainfield. And so now we have mm. several campuses across the state of New Jersey um, and we're thriving. We're thriving. I mean, uh, we're new. So any just like a, a newborn baby, still learning how to walk, we have to crawl first. But I do feel like we're in a space right now where we're about to turn the corner and grow from, you know, your traditional just figuring out a school to now servicing 3,000 students, moving from mm. a tier one school, or tier three school, um, year one, to now being a tier one school, which means that we were going from 8% of the, the, the schools in New Jersey, we were only better than 8%. And in one year later, we're now better than 60% of all schools in New Jersey. Oh, wow. And so, oh, wow. again, Congrats. right? Like, that's, that's a big I, deal. Yes. Yeah, that's a big it's, deal. It's, uh, it's the staff, it's the kids, it's everybody, man. And it's like, you know, what you're saying and, and how you ultimately uh, – find yourself to be have success with your patients it's just you know building those relationships and getting committed people committed to not a work not, not a job but they're committed to yeah um you know, the, the vision and and that's and yeah. that's what 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 i think is continuously moving us forward and and so how did you navigate covid like what did you have to shut the schools down or what what happened Yes, yeah, so, you know, the state put out a lot of guidance behind COVID. Um, we had to create a, a reopening plan. Um, and depending on where you exi were situated in the state, right, there was these, like, green, yellow, red situations exactly. that was your less risk, mid risk, low risk. I mean, sorry, high risk. Um, and so where we had high risk, we decided not to open and just go full remote. Uh, but in Patterson, mm -hmm. we actually kicked a hybrid situation where students were in three days and out two days. And then as we got closer um, to Thanksgiving, you know, we had uh, various COVID cases pop up. And at that point, mm. we moved them out in pods because they were working in silos with their students. Um, but after we got, let's say, uh, three confirmed cases, we shut down completely and uh, had everyone quarantined. And so we haven't been back in the building just yet. We will be back uh, most likely um, March 1st is the date that I'm aiming for. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the the virus has a mind of its own. I was going to say. It's like a new print. You know, yeah, you gotta, we you gotta still learn. The virus set. <laughs> yeah, there's just so many variables here. Yeah. And my ultimate yeah. Or there's no casualties because of you know my just passion to get students into a building so I, i'm going to take every precaution make sure we do it right make sure we do it safely um and Absolutely. if that means that we need to be, we'll be out you know yeah i mean that's what we need to do i mean that i mean we're, we're going to talk about that in a minute just you know doing the right things to make sure everybody is safe uh, you know, and, and, and we all want the kids in school if they can be, you know, but you, like you said, you got to do it the right way. You, you, yeah. uh, I mean, you said you talked about this or, or you wrote about it on your social media. You actually yourself contracted, um, COVID-19. Yeah. Yup. And, and I, I, yeah. so when I contracted COVID-19, it was in the beginning stages. So we're talking about March. Mm -hmm. So every, oh, this wow. is before math were even confirmed or that was like a thing that worked, it didn't work. And I was actually traveling in the airport and um, the, the traffic there, I'm assuming that's where it came from. Uh, but it hit me hard. It it, it, it hit me mm. like a, t I mean, um, like bedridden, shortness of breath, had to go to the hospital, you know. Um, and, and what was so crazy, it, being in the hospital, and the experience of typically service, right? Like, you know, the doctors are, are there, the nurses are there, everyone's kind of making sure you're good. COVID was totally different. 
they would like get him in the room, close the door, talk from outside the door, you know. Um, and I'm like, you know, was, I'm not yeah. leaving with. Yeah, so it was you and, know in a doctor. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, you know, <laughs> you're a doctor in you're in the trenches for real, and you first responded. So I can only imagine the kinds of experiences you were having. Um, but I had, but, but, a, you I know, had it's, it's interesting to hear from the patient side too. So that's why I was saying you said yeah. you were going to say that, the, and then the doctor something. You were going to say something. Yeah, the, you know, the doctor literally said, you know, we did the check chest ray, we did the EKG, and you know, your your vitals, everything is good. Um, your breathing is strong, um, and we're going to prescribe you a few things that may not cure this, but at least it help you out. So like, the, like the doctor was just cognizant of the fact that. <clears throat> Listen, man, I'm not telling you you're gonna make it, but you're good enough to leave here. So go home and relax and get through it. Um, and you know, by the grace of God, I did. And um, I, I really attested to not the medicine or anything because I didn't have any to take. It really was about um, like this holistic approach who my sister, my youngest sister, uh, happens to be a registered nurse. And she was like, you know, a lot of the research is speaking about vitamin C. And I was doing 4,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day, a gallon of water, um, B12, zinc, uh, getting a lot of rest. And um, I think it was one other thing that she had me taking. And uh, that regimen, uh, I thought, got me through. Uh, but probably all the things I did do pre-getting COVID, was probably more impactful to all of that red, which is like that is with, absolutely correct, <laughs> right? Ex exercising every day, you know, doing two miles a day, and you know, I've been a vegan for six years, so like just making choices that would reduce my my risk um, of being uh, a casualty of the virus that we didn't understand eight months ago, six months ago. Especially in the beginning, because we didn't even have any medicines to really give you. I mean, we was just throwing the kitchen sink, like a little bit of azithromycin, a Z-Pak, a little bit of steroids. But we didn't really know in the beginning what to do. We weren't even testing that much yeah. in the beginning. But yeah. what you said is very important. How you are, you know, pre-getting the COVID, is probably the most important thing that saved you. I mean, we know that diabetes is a big is a big uh, risk factor. We know you know people with hypertension and obesity, which is the reason why I wrote this book, uh, the No Guest yeah. Book Diet, to help people get to a healthier weight because obesity is a is a big one for this, and we're starting to learn more about the cytokine storm because some people get it, they get sick, and they get better, but some people get it, they get sick. And it just snowballs, and yeah. and 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 the question is, wh where's that snowball coming from, and why did it snowball in this person and not that person? And we do know that the cytokines um, that are housed, you know, that 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 obesity uh, uh, has a lot to do with, uh, can make that trigger go 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 hay haywire. And so, it is it is absolutely true that what you did before was 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 really instrumental in saving you and and you know and we're not done with with obviously we're not done with COVID nineteen um, we're still having the worst casualties the worst death rates um, every day you know you, you turn on the news and they're like oh today is the worst death rate and I'm like I thought yesterday was the worst worst death death rate and, and so we really even though we do have the vaccines we talked about the vaccines. On um, when we had when I had my live on Monday, uh, but even though we have the vaccines, until you know enough people get vaccinated, until we get to that herd immunity, we really uh, need to continue to do what we've been doing. Is you know I know it's fatigue. I'm I'm fatigued, you know, but we still yeah. got to do it. You know, you gotta you know wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. Uh, and if we do those three things, I think we'll be fine. And also watch the crowds that you're in because. You don't want, yeah. you know, you know, uh, 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 one of my patients, unfortunately, got COVID nineteen because somebody who lived in his home was out, got COVID, brought it home, and gave it to the whole family. And you know, 
you know, so it's like we all we all need to do our part. And we we all need to protect our family, um, and that's how we should be looking at it. That you know, I'm gonna do the right thing to protect my family because when I come home, even if I'm asymptomatic, I could still give it to somebody and make them symptomatic. And so, it's really important yeah. to 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 you know we and got a we got a few months left. We got a few months left to this. So you know, for um, that but all them. For those I'm that sorry, are on here that make, no, I was saying for those that are on here that are from potentially uh, follow me or are interact with me, could you uh, share the name of the book um, that could help you know mitigate obesity and get them to the weight that they oh. need to be? Oh yes, um, the name of my book is called the No Guesswork Diet. Um, I don't know if you can see it here, but the No Guesswork Diet uh, it really talks about you know. You know, getting to a healthier weight from a scientific perspective, uh, we know that weight, you know, before what we were taught in medical school on obesity was four words. Tell your patients, eat less, move more. And that's it. That was our education on obesity. But we know now that there's so much more to why people have obesity and why it's difficult to lose weight, but more importantly, why it's difficult to maintain the weight that you've lost. And why do 80 to 90% of people who lose it regain it? And it has a lot to do with, and, and people who have seen my lives before know, it has a lot to do with gut hormones. Um, so the hormones in your gut uh, regulate your hunger and your cravings. And so we know what those hormones are, we know what they do, and we also know how to bring the levels back down so that you can get so you can lose weight and so that you can keep it off and so i, I talk about the ways to get to a healthier weight and stay at a healthier weight in this book um and we go through the science a little bit but it's really someone told me today there's like your book is so easy to read and it was written that way on purpose because i wanted it to be a book that you can actually sit down and read similar to the books that i've written in the past like the pact and um, the Bond and all the, the other books that I've written so that you can actually read it and enjoy it. And while you're reading it and enjoying it, you're actually getting knowledge and you're learning your body and you're learning, you're learning the things that can, again, help you get to a healthier weight. And, you know, when I, when I started out with the statement that obesity is not the patient, the person's fault, you know, people go, whoa, what are you talking about? Of course it's their fault, but it, but it's not. And if you, if you get the book and you read the book, you'll, you'll, I'll convince you that that's not the case. It has a lot to do with, like I said, gut hormones, uh, the appetite center in your brain, and a, and a few other things that, uh, something called the set point, because uh, we have a set point for your weight and your body tries to maintain that set point at all costs. And so we go through that in the book and it's a real, it's a real easy read, it's a quick read, but, it, it gives you the tools that you need the, to get to a healthier weight. And that's, uh, and that's really my passion. My passion is, is once I learned this knowledge, it was like, okay, I got to tell everybody. Like, this is something that everybody right. needs to know because there's so many different diets out there. Like, it's a, especially this time of the year, because this is when all the diet books come out. So it's this diet, that diet, the, the tummy diet. The, the, it's just so many things. It's dizzying which is why I called it the no guesswork diet, because we want to take the guesswork out of healthy living. We want to, we don't want you to have to guess about anything. We don't want you to have to guess about what you need to do and what you don't need to do. And a lot of this is getting rid of the sugar, keeping your carbs down, particularly the refined carbs, the white sugar, you know, flour and that kind of stuff and finding um, your carb number. And what's unique about, my book is that we talk about finding your carb number. Everybody, you don't have to go keto, you don't have to, but everybody has a number where if they get below that number, like for instance, my number is 70 grams a day. So if I keep my carbs below 70 grams a day, I will predictably lose one to two pounds a week. Your number might be 90 or 100, who knows? But we teach you how to find your number and we teach you how to get to a healthy weight. And not only get to a healthy weight, again, it needs to be sustainable, which is my six S's. So sugarless, 
sustainable, yeah. it's satisfying. You know, all the all the essences that we talk about in the book, it, it are important when you look at what approach you want to take to get to a healthier weight. You got to make sure it checks off those boxes. So that yeah, so that's what it's about. And um, you, you know, so I that's what I've been that's what I've been doing for the past six years uh, with my clinic, and uh, and then just recently with this book. Love that. So I mean that, that see <clears throat> yeah, that right. So my hashtag is I save lives daily, and what I mean by that is right like saving student uh, uh, through connecting with their heart and mind, and like you you're mm. saving. Right, just connecting with their their body and essentially helping them understand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what these states. So, I love it. I love that. I love that, man. All right, let me see. There, there was a couple questions out there, and um, let's see. Oh, one of the questions were. Um, for you, Dr. Mills, do you feel like you you're back to 100 percent after you got COVID? I do. To um, yeah. So for anybody who wanna uh, join me or get a message from me every morning when I go running, you can sign up uh, at the Nike app. In our, our Nike Club app is G Mills nine four seven seven. But every morning I'm going running. Post COVID, um, it actually inspired me to start a social distance run challenge. So we couldn't come together. But through the app, what it allowed me to do was get people running all across the country, right, that mm. uh, wanted to compete for a cause. So the cause was, you know, give us $10, join, and then we'll take that money that we raise and purchase laptops for any students in need in a community of choice. And oh, so wow. We had participants. We raised over $5,000. And those winners, the first, second, and third, took those winnings and decided which students they wanted to give those laptops to. So, you know, since then I've con continued my regimen and running. Um, I'm working out each morning. I've been doing like all of what I need to do. So I do feel a hundred percent. And I've also been eating better, right? Because you can be mm -hmm. vegan. Hardly. <laughs> or those are this vegan is true. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I try to tell people all the time, like, you got to be, I mean, like, you know, you could, French fries, you know, you know, people, you know, eat French fries, they, they, they say they're vegetarian. And, you know, you can eat, you can eat a lot of things that are bad, even if you're vegan or vegetarian. And, and for those who don't know the difference, uh, being a vegetarian is you don't eat animal products, basically. But being a vegan is a little more strict because not only do you not eat the actual animal, but you also don't eat the things that they produce. So you don't, you don't eat dairy, the, the, you don't eat, so you don't eat the milk or the eggs. And so, um, so it, make, it, it, makes, it makes it a little more challenging in, 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 in this country to, to be a vegan. But because there's so many vegans, uh, and, and so it's all about supply and demand. So because there's so many people who are vegetarian or who are vegan, they're, they're things out there and you, I mean you could probably speak to that even better uh, yeah. that you know you can you can still you know enjoy eating you know you know it just it's, it's just yeah. you're a little bit more restricted shout out to Chipotle for the cauliflower game changer <laughs> <laughs> cauliflower keep it so so you said cauliflower rice right yep see yep that's what we tell people when we tell people to avoid um, the, you know, regular rice or carbs. Like there are so many things, substitutes. Like cauliflower rice is a, a, a excellent choice if you know how to make it. Some people say oh, I don't like it. I'm like because you didn't you didn't get it from the right people or you didn't make it right. Like you can you can make some good cauliflower rice. I've tasted some bomb cauliflower rice and cauliflower mashed potatoes. I know you don't eat bacon, but some yeah. places put bacon bits on it. It is um, you can you could do a lot of substitutes that are healthy, and so um, yeah, so yeah, so you could you could do it. You know, you could you could definitely do it. Um, all right, we got a few more, one or two yeah, more questions know. before we wrap up. Um, I I never heard of cauliflower wings, but <laughs> but but thank you for that. That's, that's I need to find out where they are. 
<laughs> and um, let me see. Um, and so, what are uh, this is another question for you, actually? What are some? Um, Go ahead. What are some of the benefits that you that you find that you have because your 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 lifestyle, so your diet and your exercise? What are what are some of the things that you've noticed that 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 are different since you've you know been disciplined in, in doing this? Yeah, I I think that uh, uh, my overall is just like inside feels better. So, um, you know, a lot of, like the thing concept of like taking a shower each day and like washing up. I think that, you know, when I think about what I'm putting in the body, whether I'm juicing for a week or uh, clean sorts or just eating cleaner, it really makes me feel like I'm taking that shower on the inside of my body. And, and when I'm doing certain things that I won't get into on the live, it feels better. Um, I think my energy levels are up. We talk about these skin regimens and things like that, but just eating cleaner, like my face is clearer. I don't have a ton of acne or anything like that. Like, um, and people will say that, oh, you you have a glow, right? And I'm, I'm saying to myself, right, this probably because of what I'm consuming and not so much of like products I purchase to do something to uh -huh, my skin. Uh -huh. So those things that, that I think have been a benefit to these choices. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, what you you are what you eat, as they say, um, and you it, it's the same thing. Like, so if you're eating, like you said, processed foods, a lot of junk, a lot of sugar, a lot of carbohydrates, that it's going it's going to weigh you down. Even a lot of meat, you know. Even though you know we, you know, my book is 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 mostly about a, a low carb diet. People associate that with with eating a lot of meat, and the truth is, when you get through my book. We, uh, what I recommend is a low carb Mediterranean diet. So it's mostly vegetables and fish and olive oil and those kinds of things. Uh, and so, because th those things do make you feel way down inside. And like yeah. you said, you feel lighter, you feel cleaner, you have a glow, you have energy. That, that's that's yeah. what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Yeah. So, all right. Um, I think. We are going to wrap, but I want to thank you again, Dr. Mills, for showing up and, and, and sharing your story yep. and sharing your life and, and being there for the kids and, and educating our youth. I, I just, I really appreciate you for that. And, um, you know, we got to, we need to stay in touch. And like we said, when, when we were talking before we got on the live, we definitely need to stay in touch. Yep. And, um, uh, you know, follow Dr. Mills for my follows and Dr. Mills follows, follow me. <laughs> and um yep. and pick up Dr. Mills book. Uh somebody put it on the put it on the on the chat, but it's called uh, the turnaround, one eighty days, a uh, one hundred and eighty days of change. And pick up my book, of course, the the no guesswork diet. Um <clears throat> and uh follow us, follow like I said on the social media and you'll see you'll see this posted on my YouTube channel, but it'll also be posted on Facebook and IG. And uh, Dr. Mills, any 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 last words or anything you want to say to the viewers? Um, yeah, no, I, I did see someone uh, ask a question of what did I do to connect students' hearts and minds. So I do want to respond to that. And, and oh, absolutely. I, it's, a simple, it's a simple question. And that was, what is their dream? Because everybody has one. And so in having that mm -hmm. dream, we figure out what they're passionate about. Most most leaders are telling them what they should be doing and not really questioning them about what they want to do. And so that mm. one question synthesized into like something that they intrinsically motivated to do. And my thing is, even if it shifts, right, even if it changes, at least we've identified something that they were passionate about pursuing. And after they learn that, you know what? this brought me to another place because I wanted to be yep. a professional football player. I, I was hell bent on doing that only to get to college and realize that, wow, I think I'm a mathematician. Oh, wow. I, I think that I want to educate others. So you just never know, you know, where it takes you, but, but dream big, right. Uh, make a plan, right. And take action. And I think like, uh, those are the things that'll get to you to where you want to be um, and get the book. There's more insight in there 
um, for you all who, who don't have it or, or want to learn more about what I got going on. So thank you, Dr. Hunt, man. This was amazing. That I'm is a great way to end this live. I appreciate you, brother. And uh, we'll stay in touch. And thank you all for, for viewing. Share this um, on your pages. Tell your friends about it. Uh, spread the word. Thank you. Uh, you guys take care. All right. All right. <laughs>